My wife and I had been married for two years before I found out she was cheating on me. When Camilla and I met, I was working at a big tech company as a programmer, and we happened to be at a mutual friend's restaurant opening, where she became a chef some months after. I was doing great financially at that time. During our talking stage, Camilla wasn't really the kind of girl who wanted me to spend too much time with her because she thought I was one of those men that wanted to have a nice time with her and leave, but after she got to know me, she began to bring down her walls. I knew she would be tough from the first time we spoke to each other, but from how our conversation was going, I knew she would eventually be my woman. I had not been in a relationship in a very long time, so I wanted someone I could share my life and wealth with, and I also wanted to spoil her with all the fancy lady stuff I had seen on other women. As time passed, we got closer and closer until we eventually dated. After we started dating, I began to show Canela how much I loved her. I started by buying her clothes, flowers, hair, shoes, and bags, and I even got her a new iPhone since she wanted one badly. In fact, the day she said yes to me, I bought us two tickets to go on a small summer vacation the following month. Some weeks after we started dating, I asked Camila to move in with me so we could always be together, and she did. We lived together for a year and some months, and these were one of the most amazing months of my life. Camilla was sweet, caring, and so kind. She would leave the house early in the morning for work and would return as soon as her shift was over. Most times before I returned from work, Camilla would have cooked, gotten a movie, and set up our room for us to get intimate and have our special movie night. She was simply amazing, and all this while she lived with me, I never asked her to contribute to the rent, buy groceries, or pay any bills. I believed it was my responsibility to handle all of that, since I was the one that asked her to come and live with me. I'd occasionally send money to her old mother, Lily, whenever she called for financial assistance. Shortly after that, we got married, and we officially became a couple and continued to live our happy lives. Some months after we married, Camila came home with good news one evening. She said someone was opening a big top-class restaurant down our street, and the restaurant owner reached out to her and offered her the position of chief chef. We already noticed workers renovating the building, but we didn't know the place would be a restaurant and Camilla would be asked to be in charge of the kitchen. It was beautiful and big news for us, especially because she would receive almost double her former pay, and it was closer to the house. She didn't need to bother leaving home so early to beat traffic. We celebrated her good news, and after three months, she left her old job. Initially, I believed that with this new job of hers and the fact that it was closer to the house, she would return home earlier than usual, but something strange began to happen. Camilla started to stay out late, and she would usually return home by 9 or 10 p.m. At first, it was understandable because she said they were still trying to fix some stuff in the restaurant kitchen, and she needed to help them with it. So for the first month, I understood her excuses for always coming home late at night. A few times, I went to the restaurant myself, and I would see her and some other people working in it. But after the restaurant was fixed and was fully open, Camila's late nights did not stop. It was always one excuse or another. She'd say she went grocery shopping for the restaurant or she went to buy food in bulk. She was gradually changing from the Camila I knew to someone else, and at one point, I asked her to find another job because I felt her new restaurant job was taking her away from me. We barely spent time with each other like we used to, and by the time she'd return home every evening, she would be exhausted, shower, and go straight to bed. All of this continued until it got to the point where I no longer stayed up to wait for her. I knew she'd return late anyways, so I'd lock up the house and go to bed, and she'd come in with her keys. I was still managing her new personality, and I didn't want to be hard on her because I knew how stressful it was to be a chef, but everything changed one night after I woke up at 1 a.m. to pee, and I couldn't find Camila. So I searched the house, and when I didn't see her, I became so worried, and I called her phone several times, but she didn't answer. There were a lot of thoughts running through my head, but the first thing I had to do was go to her restaurant. While I was jogging down to the restaurant, Camila called, and as soon as I picked up the call, I heard a stranger's voice. The lady said she saw the phone on the beach, and my non-stop calling forced her to call back. When I heard that, I was surprised that Camila's phone was found at the beach, so I went to get it. 
On reaching it, I unlocked her phone, found multiple messages from a guy named Edwin, and realized Camila had been cheating on me the whole time. As heartbroken as I was, I called Edwin and I introduced myself to him. When he knew it was me, he became speechless. Then I asked him to give the phone to Camila. Immediately, she began apologizing, but I told her to never come home because Edwin would be paying her bills. So I took the phone home, and while I went through her pictures, I saw photos of her and Edwin together, and I recognized him from the butcher shop, two buildings away from where Camila worked. I also found text messages between Camila and Edwin, telling Edwin that she hated her job and her boss, and if she had her way, she'd write a negative review about him on how he treated his staff and the quality of food they made. It was just perfect. The following morning, I went to Edwin's shop and reported him to the management, showed them pictures of him and my wife, and told them it wasn't okay for employees to get into their client's personal life. Fortunately, Edwin's boss already had multiple complaints about Edwin, and with my complaint, he got fired. From there, I went to the restaurant Camilla worked at, and I handed the printed conversation between her and Edwin to her boss, who happened to be around. She was fired immediately, and the two of them were left jobless. I didn't let her come into the house to pick anything because I bought them with my money. We divorced afterward, and that was the end of us. I was so sad she had broken my trust and cheated on me with the butcher guy. OP, I know this is heartbreaking, and I'm so sorry. It's pathetic that your ex-wife cheated on you despite everything you did for her and her family. It's even worse that she took your love and affection for granted. I know it's hard, but you did the right thing by divorcing and kicking her out of your life. I even love that you paid them back, and they also suffered for what they did to you. Everything will be fine, and hopefully soon you will meet someone loyal who will value your love and not think that it's okay to hurt a partner like your ex-wife did. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Now, let's move on to the second story of the day. My wife Amanda and I used to be madly in love with each other. We were kids who grew up in the same neighborhood, and although I was a few years older than her and ahead of her in school, we still knew that we liked each other. As teenagers, we used to hang out with each other a lot, and if there was any house party in the neighborhood that Amanda was at, you'd find me there too. When the time for college came, I got in a year before her, and two years later, she joined me. While I was in college, she visited whenever she could, and her parents gave their consent because they knew we were together. When she eventually joined me, I was forced to move out of my tiny studio apartment and rent a bigger space to move in together and live like a couple. I can't really put a number on the years we have been together, but I can say she was there with me for a long time. Like regular teenagers, we broke up a couple of times and got back together. Once, we even had a nasty fight, and she moved out of our apartment, but after everything was settled, she moved back in. We were already used to each other, and no matter how often we fought, we'd always run back into each other's arms. Honestly, I loved Amanda a lot, and I could not even imagine spending my life with anyone else. I had gotten so used to her, and even when I tried to flirt with another woman, they still could not be like Amanda. Right after I finished college, I was lucky to get a job at a journalism firm, and though it was hard to adjust initially, the money started coming in steadily. When I started to earn, things got so much better between Amanda and me. I could finally afford to buy her the things she wanted, take her to the restaurants she always wanted us to go to, and I even got her beautiful lady stuff and lots more. Before then, I depended on my parents' money and the peanuts I earned from working part-time at a pastry shop. I ensured that I cared for Amanda and her needs while she was still in college and contributed in every little way I could. When Amanda finished college, she didn't get a job immediately. She submitted her CV to several organizations until she was lucky to get called and hired by one. With her new job, things got easier for us, and the burden of caring for everyone alone got off me. We began to split bills so it could enable us to save some money and do the things we wanted to do for ourselves. Two years after we both got jobs, we decided it was time to get married. We didn't want a big wedding anymore like we always imagined as children, because we understood the financial burden we would have to bear, so we opted for something small and classy. Amanda loved classy, and I was cool with whatever she wanted, provided it made her happy. We made preparations for the wedding, saved a lot of money, 
and when it was time, we returned to our hometown. It was meant to be a small garden wedding, but it was bigger than we expected. Our parents took care of some things for us, making it classier than we expected. The wedding was a success, and we were both so happy. After the wedding, we returned to the city and continued our regular lives, but we didn't want to have kids immediately. Right from when Amanda and I were teenagers, she loved going for night walks. She always wanted to feel the cool evening breeze in her hair and admire the shops and beautiful street lights at night, and she loved how beautiful the city was at night. I was already used to her walks, and whenever I was less busy, I would join her or she would go without me. Even after we got married, she continued with her night walks, and I didn't have any issues with that, provided she walked on a road or street where there were many people. The only times Amanda didn't go for her walks were only when she was exhausted from work, sick, or there was a curfew in the city. For the whole two years of our marriage, Amanda went for her walk at least four times a week, and I never suspected that she was doing anything behind my back. One day, around 11 p.m., Amanda had gone for her walk as usual and had not returned yet. I can't explain how, but the sudden craving for donuts just came. It was so strong that my nose began to perceive the sweet aroma of hot donuts, and when I could not hold it anymore, I decided to drive to a nearby donut shop. On getting there, I discovered that the donut shop was already closed, and I was so disappointed. I already texted Amanda that I would step out for some minutes in case she got home and couldn't find me. I was in the car park close to the donut shop and just about to drive out when someone knocked on my window. I wound down my window and the guy introduced himself as one of the workers at the donut shop. He said he had just gotten off work and needed my help to pass him some current because his car was not turning on. I said okay, and I got out my wire plugs, and just as we were trying to put them on his batteries, suddenly, my wife came out of his car and asked, did you find some help? And he responded that I helped him. When my wife looked up and realized it was me, she froze at the spot. I looked at him and told him she was my wife, and he tried to defend that my wife was single because he had never seen her with a wedding band. Amanda began to cry and apologize. I could not believe it. I just took my wires and left them without helping him. Amanda called my phone repeatedly and didn't come home that night. When she came home the next day, she saw her bags packed outside the house. She begged me and even said, I should not let one mistake ruin all our years together, but that was it for me. She knew how much I hated infidelity and there was no way I could let that slide. Our friends and parents were shocked when we divorced, but it had to be that way. Even though we are apart now, I still think about her, and I know it will be hard to get over her, but I just cannot condone a cheating partner. It must have been very hard for you to find out that your wife and childhood best friend had been cheating on you after being with each other for years. It's terrible when someone finds out their partner is cheating on them, especially when you've poured your heart into your marriage. I'm glad you didn't let her emotionally manipulate you into being with her after breaking your trust, and I'm happier you divorced her. You don't have to rush into a new relationship. Give yourself time to heal properly. I wish you all the best. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.